Hey Adam, a couple weeks ago, we went to a rather special event. The, the the Paramount release of the new trailer for Star Trek Beyond. It was amazing. It I was their fan event. You emceed it. I emceed. I got to interview J.J. Abrams and Justin Lin on stage. I got to talk to Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, Carl Urban. Um, the fans were amazing. The trailer they showed was amazing. The behind the scenes footage. <sighs> I mean, and, it was a deeply awesome fan event. And some of that footage, of course, we can't show to you, but we were there on site to check out some of those new costumes and props. That's right. They had some of the screen used costumes on display in the main party space for the fans. Um, and they were magnificent. I love looking at modern costumes up close because costuming has undergone this great shift in the past 10 years. Yeah. These exotic fabrics, these screen prints to give texture. It started with Spider-Man, but now it's across all superhero costumes. And I saw a bunch of that on the Star Trek stuff. And not just the manufacturing process, but also just the design style. Do you remember movies like even Superman, Man of Steel, yeah. and the last Star Trek movie, they put tiny versions of the logos as the patterning. Exactly. Exactly. all over the fabric. They didn't have that this time. I mean, they've done two movies already yeah. with this new franchise, uh, and now I thought it was about time that they upgraded the costumes. Yeah, so, so they, they actually also had, uh, is it Kyla, is that the name mm -hmm. of, the, of the girl? Yes. So she has a staff, which is some sort of weapon, right? It has lots of functionality. They had one and they gave it away to one of the fans, but I got to play with it beforehand. And it was a carbon fiber rod with foam rubber attachments oh, nice. on it. Yeah, super lightweight. Um, and that's the kind of stuff they had on display, some of those. And then my personal favorite, which they were calling the environmental suit. Mm. That's what Zachary Quinto called it because he said he was jealous that Chris Pine got to wear it for a good portion of the movie. The one you see in the trailer with the shoulder pads. Right, with shoulder pads. It's a very suit-like kind of uh, officer's uniform. It really was kind of reminiscent of some of the old Star Trek movie uniforms from like Search for Spock or even Khan. Yeah, not as puffy, not as but puffy, definitely they brought out more that texture. And a sort of a structural sort of naval look to it that mm -hmm. I kind of dug. The new on-ship uniforms have collars now. I like the new dresses they have for Uhura. She actually has a ranking. She has a ranking. The women have rank in this movie. I, I, About I, I time. apologize to the world that this took so long, but it's great that it does the women have long sleeves. Mm -hmm. There it's, was a tricorders, phasers, and of course, of course, a captain's chair. Yeah. I sat in the captain's chair. I did too. It's very different than sitting in this one. Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny. If, if you ever get a chance to sit in my Kirk's captain's chair here, what you'll notice is, is, that, is that it engenders sitting kind of just like Kirk does, that all the ways in which he sits <laughs> in the chair are kind of engendered by the chair structure. But when you sit, when I sat, when the you new one felt this too, sat in Chris Pine's captain's chair, um, it's wider and shallower and engenders more of, of that kind of thing that Chris does. And you realize again, architecturally, the chair is engendering a way of sitting. That's so cool. Well, the actors were there as well. And well, I got to chat with them. Yes, Norm interviewed all three of the guys. Um, and how were they? What, you know, I found backstage, what I thought was really lovely was how much the actors loved each other. Like mm -hmm. they are best friends. They hadn't seen each other in a few days or whatever. There was hugs and fist bumps and same thing with JJ, same thing with Justin. Like it's clear that the Star Trek crew and cast is a real family. How were they to interview? They were awesome. I mean, the family dynamic was what you would hope would come out of them making this film. You, you wish that these people, like if they're living on board a ship for five years, they, we want to feel like they actually like each other. Yeah. And yeah. so we have the footage from that interview, which we'll play right now. Boom. All right. Uh, first of all, Adam was supposed to do this, but he decided I'd do it, and so I'm here. So Great. Thanks. Cool. thanks. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, big time Star Trek fan. Been Star Trek conventions all my life. Uh, when the last movie finished, we all want the next one. Were you guys eager to make this movie? Yeah, we were all really excited to get back together. I mean, we have so much fun together, and uh, you know, we're all uh, we're all so much a part of each other's lives anyway that it was really nice when we get to share that experience of of making of making these movies. Yeah. So what's that like coming back on set, like that first day? Because in the story, you guys are in your five-year mission, right. but for you guys, it's back after a hiatus. A couple of years, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's I'm, really easy. I mean, that's the, the great thing about our group is that it's, uh, we, I mean, thanks to JJ, the group is really solid and tight, so we don't really have a, a problem, I think, getting back into the swing of things. Um, I think what was really exciting about this film is 
I often think that about big films. It's always, you know, it's it's the heart of the matter. It is the action that's taking place. You never think about like the day after, what happens in those two weeks when nothing's going on. And, and Simon and Doug, who uh, wrote the the film, I think very intelligently looked at what it would be like to be in a a submarine basically gone for a really long time with the same people every day and that, that kind of toll that that takes on on your psyche i thought it's, a, it's an intelligent way to start a film it's like what astronauts real astronauts have sure to do. Yeah, yeah absolutely right? so how did you guys prepare for that well, sleepovers hang out you know this one we were on location which the last two we shot here in los angeles so we were all away from home mm. which was great you know it was like summer camp pretty much we we yeah. just yeah we spent all our free time together and hung out and we were up in Vancouver during the summer last year, which was a great time to be there. And mm. We had an amazing time. I, I really feel like we made the most of it. Uh, kind of showed that city how to do it. We really did, <laughs> didn't we? And I played a lot of golf. That was part of my preparation. Cool. Um, I might get some great ideas out in the golf course. Yeah. Because um, Carl Urban is the world's most boring man. Thank you very much. You guys also have a lot of fun <laughs> with the props and the costumes. Is that fun? About, who likes putting on the costume the most? I don't think any of us do. I mean, the costumes. <laughs> First of all, you're wearing them for like five months, so you know, by the end of them, you're just sort of like, all right. I don't know, we make the most of it. What do you, you know, no, the boots, no, 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 the boots? No, I'm only thinking about, the, the, we had one costume where I had to do a really, uh, uh, you know, uh, quiet scene with Zach, and the whole time I think my <laughs> collar was pushing up my chin, uh, so it just had a roll of fat, which <laughs> was just what we're talking about. There's a, a retro vibe, as you can kind of tell, I would say, from uh, from the costumes on, on this film. And, uh, and and I think that kind of carries through to the overall aesthetic. You know, this is the 50th mm -hmm. anniversary of Star yep. Trek, which is a huge milestone for any franchise. I mean, uh, it's crazy, really, when you think about something lasting for that long. And uh, it's half the life of Paramount, you know, really. So it's been, uh, it's been, I think a, an exciting time for us all to know that we get to celebrate that and uh, share that with the diehard fans who you know have been supporting this work for such a long time. Um, Meeting some fans out in conventions and stuff. Any any good stories? We've had about five hundred fans here tonight. Yeah. We'll probably have some good stories around about ten o'clock. <laughs> awesome. um, and then you guys want to do another one? Well, well, I mean, we're just really chance? at the point of releasing this, and and uh, you know, hopefully, people enjoy it as, and have as much fun with it as we had in making it. So, you know, we'll see. Awesome. You guys are family. Yeah. Yeah, you know? and that's what that's what Star Trek's about. It's about this eclectic group of of people who become a family mm -hmm. and and go out and uh, explore space. And and I think one of the enduring appeals about it is it that that it, it is at its essence uh, mankind. Uh, at its best, and and, and aspiring to um, to work together in unity. Well, can't wait to see you home. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Have a good night.